All right, welcome back to the second part of the chapter three comprehension checks. So if you'll remember, we left off talking about light, frequency, and wavelengths. So for question number seven is gonna be the first one we start here. And it tells you that electromagnetic waves, and it gives me a wavelength of two times 10 to the negative eight meters and are detected. And it's asking you to use the spectrum on page 78 figure out what these waves are called. So I'm gonna add the spectrum above, and you're basically just gonna be looking on this spectrum under wavelength until you see 10 to the negative eight. You're not gonna be seeing two times of it, but you're just looking at something times 10 to the negative eight. Now look on this spectrum, you're gonna see the top part, it says frequency, and the bottom, it is wavelength. So you're looking at the bottom. And when you see that, you're gonna find that around the negative eight wavelength, is ultraviolet light. So before we go to question number eight, we're going to learn or discuss light as energy. And light is one of the main types of energy. And so light can actually be emitted um, when that electron, like we talked about in the past video, jumps orbit or energy levels, it produces something called a photon. And a photon is just a tiny little packet of light. And when it produces these photons, it's actually this little packet, it's like a little thing of energy in it. And we're gonna be measuring energy in a unit that may be new to you, and it's called a joule, and it's spelled J-O-U-L-E, and it's the list after the sci a scientist. And a joule is essentially if you took just one apple and you lifted it in the air one meter, that's about a joule. So it's not a lot of energy that we're talking about. And so actually it says the average teenager goes through about 9 million joules of energy a day. So a joule is a very small amount of energy. Now to calculate the amount of energy that is in a photon or a packed particle of light, to calculate this, we're going to be getting a new equation. Yes, we've got a lot of equations for this chapter. So remember to keep your ongoing cheat sheet or your note card with your equations on it. And so for this one, it is energy equals H times F. Now E stands for energy. H, um, get to just a minute. And F is frequency. And we just did a whole bunch of equations calculating wavelengths and frequency. So H is a constant called Planck's constant. And Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per second. And so make sure that you add what H is onto your note card. It doesn't help you if you don't know what it is. So to calculate the energy, really the main thing you need to know is you have to know the frequency. And you'll notice these are what we call, when we talked about frequency and wavelengths, we said they were inversely proportional as one went up, one went down. But these are directly proportional, so basically, as the frequency of light goes up, the energy goes up. And if you're gonna look at your spectrum of wavelengths, which I will add up there, where you have the purple end of the spectrum, um, the blue purple end, those have your shortest wavelengths, right? Those have your waves that are really closer together, about 400 nanometers. And those wavelengths, since they're really close together and they have a shorter wavelength, if you're standing in the ocean and these waves are coming really close together, they're hitting you a lot. So they have a high frequency. So these blues and purples, light waves, have a higher frequency because you're getting hit by more waves constantly. Now, as frequency goes up, energy is going to go up too. And so the energy that those blue ultraviolet, like blue purple waves carry is a lot more than the red waves. And the, those violet waves carry so much more energy. And that comes from some of the dangers too of sunlight, right? That's those ultraviolet lights that can damage your skin because they have a short wavelength. They hit you really fast and they're carrying a lot of energy when they do that. As the frequency goes up, the energy is going to go up. Now we can calculate the energy from a wave. So we can figure out the wavelength. We can figure out the frequency, or we can figure out the energy from a wave. And that's what question number eight is asking you. It says, what's the wavelength of a photon? And it gives me an energy of 6.8 
times 10 to the negative 17th, and that's in joules. So if I have a photon and I have the energy, right, I'm putting it right here. But with this question, it's asking for the wavelength of the photon and it gives me the energy. So with the energy, I can only calculate the frequency, but I can then take the frequency and calculate the wavelength with the other equation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate the frequency. And so they give you the energy to put in for E and H is that constant times F. So I'm gonna move this over here, divide by it so that I can solve for F. Try to keep your units so you can check to make sure your units cancel out. Now, as you do this division, remember parentheses on the top and the bottoms, joules is gonna cancel out and you're actually gonna be left with 1.03 times 10 to the 17th and that's like a one over a second because all you have is the second in the bottom. And if you'll remember that unit is actually a Hertz and so that's a unit for frequency. Now, we're not looking for frequency, we're looking for wavelength. So we're gonna take this and put it into the wavelength equation, which if you remember is frequency is equal to C divided by wavelength. So I'm gonna take this frequency and put it over here. Now, when I first write it like this, I write the frequency and I'm gonna be writing it equals to C. C is the speed of light in the air and divide it by the wavelength. So I have to solve for wavelength. So if I bring wavelength over here, and I'm gonna divide by this, so get wavelength alone, divide by the frequency, so moving the frequency over. And seconds is gonna cancel out when you put this in your calculator. Remember, parentheses around the top and the bottom. Get 2.91 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. Now let's go back to our original equation and see what significant figures. So here I have three significant figures in this measurement, so I'm gonna have three significant figures in my answer. Here I have three significant figures in this measurement. I also have three significant figures in all my other constants. So I wanna make sure that I keep three significant figures in my answer. So for question number nine, we're gonna go back to a really simple model of the planetary model of an atom. And like I talked about in the last chapter, electrons can be in different orbitals or energy levels. As it gets excited, it can jump up, let's a level. So this first energy level they say is n equals one would be this first one. And then the next one would be n equals two. And that's how we are noting energy levels. So if it's at one and it gets excited and it jumps up to two, when it goes back down to one, it's releasing that energy. And as it's releasing that energy, it's producing light. And so question number nine says an electron moves from the N2 orbit of a hydrogen atom. So I just have one proton, and here's my electron. It's in the N2 orbit of a hydrogen atom. And it's going back to the N1 orbit, so it comes down. So as it comes down a level, it's releasing energy. The wavelength that it emits to do that, so when it's going from two to one, it's making a wavelength with a 122 nanometers like wavelength between distance between the crest of the waves. So now we have an electron and it's getting enough energy not to go to two, but to go to five. I have a hard time drawing five, but so we get an electron all the way out here at N5 and it releases enough energy to come all the way back down to one. And the question is saying, will it wavelength be longer or shorter than the 122? For this electron to go further away from the nucleus and to go further out, it must absorb more energy. And therefore, when it falls back closer, say falls, not really falling, but when it comes back closer, it's gonna be releasing more energy. Now, if you'll remember, energy equals HF, which means basically energy goes up as frequency goes up. So if it's producing more energy, it actually is coming from a light wave that has a higher frequency. 
Now, if this wave has a higher frequency, if you'll remember we're comparing wavelengths and as frequency goes up, wavelength goes down. So this is actually gonna be a shorter wavelength. So it's gonna be less than the 122. Question 10 tells me I have an electron and it's actually jumped out to N4. So one, two, three, four. And it wants to know how many different possible wavelengths of light this electron could emit as it went back to its ground state. And so let's see, if it went from N4, it could go from N4 straight to N1. That would be one wavelength of light it could emit. The other one, it could go from, it could take the path of going from four to three to two to one. And so this would be one wavelength. As it took this path, this is actually one, two, three wavelengths it would be releasing because it's dropping from four levels. Another process it could take is it could go from four and it can skip three and it can go from two and then it could go to one. Well, we've already counted for two to one, but we haven't accounted for it jumping from four to two without skipping. So that would be another wavelength here. And the other option it can do is it could go from four to three, skip two and go to one. Well, I've already accounted four to three, but um, not skip two, yep, there we go. Getting messy, sorry. I haven't accounted for three straight to one, so that would be another wavelength, three, four, five, six. So there's total of six wavelengths that it can produce as it's releasing. This is kind of an odd question. So if it's confusing, don't stress about it too much. Last question, number 11. I really hope you get to do one of these problems in lab. It's called a spectroscopy. So you're gonna take a sample. It's usually a type of a metal salt. It's gonna look like a powder and you're gonna burn it and pass it through a flame. And as it passes through a flame, it's gonna glow different colors. As it glows these different colors, you can actually get a device and look through the flame and see its spectrum that it produces. And so that's what the question is showing you a spectrum and I'm gonna add it above so that you can see what it looks like. So this particular sample, you're gonna see a band of purple, you're gonna see a little bit of blue light, it has a little bit of yellow, some reds, and an orange, a bunch of different lights. You're gonna compare this to some of the spectrums that are given to you on page 84. And what you're looking for on page 84 is if somebody has already burned some metal samples and they are showing you the spectrum for those samples. So you're gonna be looking to see which colors you can actually see in the one you have. And you're gonna see potassium, hopefully. And I see potassium because there's that purple band and you can look and Potassium is the only sample that has that purple light and I actually really enjoy burning potassium because it has that violet color to it. The other one that you're gonna notice is strontium and you're gonna see the yellows and kind of the reds match up and strontium burns this really pretty red color. All right, that's the end of the chapter three comprehension check. Follow along with the next video for the chapter three review questions.